Hi, so uh, I'm Riley, I'm uh, an anesthesiologist from Vancouver, and uh, last summer I ran across Canada. So my story begins in 2007 when my dad was diagnosed with prostate cancer. He had surgery to remove his prostate in the spring of 2008. Shortly after that, my grandfather died of prostate cancer, and uh, within about six months, two of my really close friends were diagnosed with prostate cancer. 18 months after that, my dad's prostate cancer came back. So over the course of two, two and a half years, prostate cancer was this thing that sort of thrust itself into my life and uh, became a big part of it. And uh, it wasn't something that I was expecting. It wasn't something that uh, I, you know, I heard a lot about. And it was something that I felt like I wanted to uh, do something against and to, uh, to raise awareness for. So. Uh, prostate cancer, it doesn't just affect my, can uh, my family, as you heard, um, it is quite a common cancer. It's actually um, one in six men will get prostate cancer. Um, that's uh, more common than breast cancer. And um, those of, those of uh, uh, people who do get it, if I look around the room here and say there's 300 people in the room, if 150 of you are men, uh, 25 of you will get prostate cancer. Of those 25, four of you will die from it. Those of you who don't, uh, don't escape completely. The surgery and uh, treatment for prostate cancer can have devastating complications like impotence, incontinence, and depression. That obviously doesn't just affect the men. Uh, all the women in the audience have fathers and brothers, uh, sons, and it's really, uh, a whole family issue. So I decided that I, I wanted to do something and uh, running across Canada was the biggest thing that I could think of to do that uh, would raise the most amount of awareness. So in May of 2011, I set off uh, from the small little island you can see in the far right hand side of the map there. That's a place called Cape Spear, Newfoundland. It's the most easterly part of North America. I ran 70 kilometers a day over the course of five months to get to Vancouver. To uh, put that into European perspective, that's like running from London to Moscow, and then turning around and running back, <laughs> and then turning north and running 600 kilometers up to Edinburgh. So. It was quite a distance, but just running wasn't going to do it. I uh, needed a way to uh, let people know what I was doing. So I came up with a charity, uh, and we called it Step Into Action, because we were trying to get men to step into action and go uh, get tested. And uh, we had the, the money linked to a Vancouver-based uh, prostate cancer research center, which was one of the uh, foremost prostate cancer research centers in the world. But even that wasn't going to be enough to, to let people know what we're doing. We, we felt like we needed a cool slogan, because everybody needs a cool slogan. And uh, one of the difficulties with prostate cancer is if you want to get a man to go see his GP when he's healthy and has no symptoms, it's pretty hard. If you try to get him to go see his GP and tell him he's going to get a prostate exam, <laughs> it's even harder. So what we tried to do was use that idea, and we said, uh, literally, one finger can save your life. And so uh, I spent last summer giving prostate cancer the finger. <laughs> we came up uh, with all the promotional material we could think of. We put out uh, information cards. We came up with uh, prostate cancer ties and pins and uh, wristbands. We sent out uh, uh, name badges and buttons. And we went uh, on every radio, newspaper, and uh, television show that would have us and that we could find. And we did everything that we could to raise awareness. And what uh, started as um, this uh, campaign to raise awareness for prostate cancer ended up being the biggest adventure of my life. So when I started off, I um, uh, didn't really know what to expect. But uh, as, as it started to build, it became quite awesome. I, I got to meet thousands of prostate cancer survivors, which was great for my own psyche. 
I um, got to take part. I'm a big sports fan, and I got to uh, to do the halftime shows at some football games and my local ice hockey game. And we we were able to reach hundreds of thousands of men through that media. Um, I, uh, as uh, the momentum built and we got closer to Vancouver, which is where I'm from, I, uh, I had police and fire truck escorts, which I thought was awesome. <laughs> and uh, as I ran into Vancouver, they actually relit the uh, Olympic cauldron for us. And uh, I finished my run by jumping into the Pacific Ocean, and I had 1,200 of my old uh, uh, kids from my school there with me. So it was, it was absolutely awesome. But by no means was it just you know fun and easy. It uh, was a bit grueling. It was monotonous. Running uh, seven to eight hours a day can get you through your iTunes library fairly quickly, <laughs> and um, it uh, it had things that I like to call the the five H's. Where uh, the first was uh, hills. There's a lot of them in Canada. I don't know if you guys have heard of the Rocky Mountains. Um, <laughs> There's the uh, heat and humidity. It was 44 degrees Celsius and 80 to 90 percent humidity. So I was wringing my shirt, my shorts out every two or three kilometers. Uh, the headwind was immense. I was going east to west, so I had one every day. And there were times where I had to sneak in behind my RV so that I could uh, keep moving forward. And then there was the hunger. And I was hungry all the time. <laughs> but the worst part by far were the blisters. I uh, didn't have a lot of time to train. I live in Winnipeg at the moment. It's minus 40 in the winter when I was trying to do training. It's not the most conducive to running. And when I started off, my feet felt it. I had blisters every day until I got to Calgary, which was about 5,000 kilometers away. And this photo is taken from uh, a hospital two weeks into the run when I ended up um, having to sort of take a little break while I got them tended to. People love to talk and ask me about statistics, and so I've, I put in some here for you. Uh, I ran 6,621 kilometers and went through eight pairs of shoes. Uh, I actually lost 46 pounds, despite the fact that I was eating when, uh, even when I was running. Um, we raised close to $600,000, and we're still climbing. I ran uh, towards the end 70 kilometers a day and maxed out at around 80. With running five and a half to six and a half minutes per kilometer, that took seven to eight hours a day to get through uh, what I was doing. I, um, I learned a lot during this trip. And uh, some of the lessons I learned was, one is the, the power of being completely unreasonable. Um, I had this idea to run across Canada. And I had a lot of people tell me that it was uh, going to take too long to be, and do, be too complicated logis logistically. But uh, one of my favorite quotes is from Mark Twain. And I'm paraphrasing when I say that uh, he said, the reasonable man adapts himself to the world around him. Uh, the unreasonable man tries to adapt the world around him to himself. That's why most progress is made by unreasonable men. The next thing I learned was uh, the power to inspire. If you have a great idea, uh, people get excited about it. And if you can get people excited about your cause, then you can get them to become partners in your cause. And that helps you build support and momentum. And I tried to build a team around me that uh, was excited about what I was doing. Uh, and from there, we were able to build sponsors and get momentum. And that's when our campaign, campaign really started to kick off. The next thing I learned was the power of creating a diverse team. I spent eight hours a day running. I spent the rest of the time eating or sleeping. I didn't have uh, a lot of time to be doing a lot of the promotions that I wanted uh, to be doing. But I had a campaign manager who uh, was great at coming up with things like, one finger can save your life. Um, and I had a road manager who was relentless at keeping uh, our morale up and would hand me sandwiches out the window and say, even though they were the same sandwiches every day, today, guess what? The lettuce is next to the tomato. <laughs> Yesterday, it was next to the cheese. And I had a family that was fantastic at helping uh, get, su uh, get support, get sponsors, and create events. The last thing I learned was the power of making it personal. I could have gone door to door and uh, said, you know, I'm uh, here. I'm running about prostate cancer. And uh, I want you to go to your GP and have a prostate exam. And uh, that would work to a, cer to a certain extent, but it would also be a little bit uh, more difficult. Um, I tried to make it about my grandfather, my father, myself, and then I tried to make it about your grandfather, your father, uh, and yourself, or the man in your life. And I found that to be uh, a lot more, uh, a lot, a lot more successful. So when I started this, I had a, I had a big 
I had a big dream that I was gonna I was gonna do this and uh, and try to figure out uh, the ways to raise the most amount of awareness. Uh, I had to take that dream off the shelf and start working at it bit by bit, but. Uh, it ended up being a fantastic experience, and like I said, uh, one in six men get prostate cancer, but for my dad, it was one in six. My grandfather is one in six, and there's a very good possibility that both my brother and myself could be one in six. So thank you.